the second part about the superconductivity due to Majorana thermal, uh, fermion fluctuations. So, oh, it's not working. Okay, to begin with, let's acknowledge my collaborators, Rafael uh, Teixeira and Herman Freire from UFG, and Eduardo Miranda from Winnicott. I don't know if Eduardo is, is here, but all right. Uh, so the first part of my talk, I'm going to try to uh, elucidate the role of pneumatic fluctuation for, for, so for the appearance of superconductivity in the iron-based superconductor. Here we have an example of uh, this kind of superconductor. We have this, uh, the, main, the main structure is the plane of iron and arsenic. And we have all the elements, but the main, the main uh, physics is contained in these planes of these materials. And here we have the phase diagram. If you dope with the electron, oh, all right. If you dope, we have electron doping or whole doping, you have this kind of phase diagram. We have superconductivity at some range of, uh, for example, electro doping. We also have this spin dense wave phase. And before the system enters the spin dense wave phase, we have this pneumatic phase, which is related to the breaking of the uh, tetragonal symmetry in this case. And we heard a lot about this kind of state. Uh, and also, the pneumatic state can be seen, for example, the measurement of this uh, the resistivity. At some point, there will be a kink and the kink indicates the transition to the pneumatic state. And as you can see, the pneumatic state is, uh, happens with a temperature higher than this temperature for this uh, spin dense wave phase. And possibly these two uh, kind of order have the same, uh, the same quantum critical point, which will be inside the superconducting dome. All right, but the question is, what is, this, uh, what is the effect of the pneumatic order on this kind of system? Uh, this question is tricky because the pneumatic state happens uh, at the same time, or almost at the same time, uh, that this antifermagnet uh, order, spin dense wave order. But there is this kind of this system, the iron selenide, which is a iron based superconductor, but we don't have the, the arsenic atom. We have these selenium atoms forming this, this plane. So uh, the, nice, the nice feature of this kind of system is because we don't have the intermagnet order. We have just superconductivity and spin dense wave order. Uh, it's, I'm sorry, and the magic order in this case. And we can ask what is, this, what is the impact of the pneumatic order on the superconductivity state? Uh, is studying this kind of system. And uh, first of all, uh, let's highlight uh, the, the behavior of this uh, electro resistivity in this system. Close to the, the pneumatic quantum critical point, the pneumatic resistivity has a power law behavior, but the exponent, as we can see, for example, here at high temperature, the, and close to the value of the depression we have at this axis, there is a depression, and close to the pneumatic quantum critical point, this, uh, the resistivity behaves as a power law, but the exponent is three halves. But uh, close enough for low enough temperature, and uh, we have this kind of uh, T-square behavior. And for obtaining this kind of result, it is necessary to apply a magnetic field because we have to destroy superconductivity. Uh, I think this is a related question to the first uh, talk, but uh, in fact, we have uh, this kind of behavior. And the, the, nice, the nice feature is because the resistivity at low temperature and close enough to this pneumatic quantum critical point uh, is given in, ter in terms of this thermoelectric behavior. Right, but at high temperature, have a non-thermoelectric behavior. 
so the question I want to address, uh, and there is another point I have to show you, is because there is a, the superconducti superconductivity is not peaked at the pneumatic quantum critical point. There is a, another difference from this in the wave case. But, uh, however, if you take the theoretical works uh, that try to address the impact of the pneumatic order, the superconductivity TC, which is the critical temperature for the superconductivity order, is higher closer to the pneumatic critical point. And besides, at high temperature, we have this strange metal phase where the resistivity is linear in temperature. And uh, this is always the case. There is no fairly to behavior right here, at least for low temperature. For low temperature, we, have a, we also have a no fairly to behavior. But uh, in the case of the pneumatic uh, state, we have to include, besides the electronic contribution, we have to include the, letters, the coupling to the letters, uh, which means we have to couple the, the pneumatic or the parameter phi of R to the, uh, to the uh, phonons which describe the, the, the letters. We have uh, this linear coupling. This is, the, uh, this is a symmetry allowed interaction, and we have this strain. So the pneumatic order parameter is coupled to the strain field. And the strain field is defined in terms of the lattice displacement. And if you include this kind of interaction, we arrive at this uh, <coughs> phase diagram. And uh, the main effect of the lattice interaction is to, uh, in the case of uh, the real displacement of the pneumatic point critical point to uh, this new value, R0. R0 is given in terms of the, uh, of the lattice interaction. And as well, there is this transition, the, the line which uh, determines the transition to the pneumatic state is displaced as well. And the main effect of, for example, in the specific heat is that the specific heat of the, in this case, there is a, this transition to, from a non fermi liquid to a fermi liquid behavior in that case. But if you include, for example, if we try to calculate the electric resistivity in that case, and also have to include the, uh, the coupling to impurities, but if you calculate the electric resistivity using, for example, Boltzmann equation, but it is not, uh, it, it, it's not dependent on the kind of uh, approach to evaluate this resistivity, we can see we have the experimental result for this resistivity, and you have this uh, effective exponent, and here it is, uh, it is given as a function of the temperature. And for, uh, for reasonable, reasonable values of the, uh, of the coupling to impurities and the coupling to the lattice, kappa lattice is an effective coupling defined in terms of this interaction, you have a transition from a non ferm liquid to a ferm liquid behavior at low temperature. So it is, in fact, important to consider the lattice coupling of the pneumatic order parameter to the, to the elast elastic degrees of freedom. Sorry? I, I can hear you. R, I'm sorry, what, what, oh, okay, R, as you can s define here, is, it, I, I'm gonna show you the results right, right now, it's defined in terms of this interaction, the, the interaction to the lattice. So it's, it, uh, I can see it's, it's a kind of effective coupling, but it's like, uh, there is a this displacement of the quantum critical point due to, to the uh, lattice interaction. Just the case. So you want to study not the effect of, of the uh, lattice on the, on the electric resistivity, but for example, what is the impact of the pneumatic coupling, or oh, I'm sorry, the pneumatoelastic coupling on the superconductive state? So this is the model for the 
uh, for the system, or at least the minimal model to describe this iron selenides. It's a simple model because uh, it's a two-dimensional uh, system. You have this, the electronic, uh, the contribution of the uh, G2 electrons, it's a type by model. And here you have the, the contribution from the nematic order parameter, parameter, and you have this Yukawa coupling. So it's a simple Yukawa coupling because you have this uh, psi described the electrons, and you have phi. Phi is the bosonic field. And here we have uh, the we have uh, the part of the Hamiltonian which describes the 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 phonons, right? You have uh, this matrix of the last constant just for two-dimensional system, close, it's a tetragonal system. And besides, we have this second coupling. The, the last coupling is the coupling of the, nematic, of the nematic field to the elastic degrees of freedom. And besides, uh, right here for the, uh, for the case of the Yukawa coupling, we have this nematic form factor, which is a D-wave nematic form factor for a B one G nematic transition. So this is the the minimum model, and now I'm gonna try to evaluate or to investigate the superconducting properties. But besides, after integrate integrate out in the uh, the nematic the electron the, I'm sorry not the electrons the forms of the theory we get another uh, anisotropic mass. It's an it's a anisotropic mass for the, nematic, for the nematic field. And uh, responding to the question, these are not, is the new position of the quantum critical point, right? It depends on the nematic, on the nematic, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not the nematic, the lattice coupling, and it, it also depends on the uh, elastic constant. And we have uh, an effective lattice coupling defined in terms of this, of the microscopic interaction and also on the elastic constants. But for the, this uh, mass, what you can see is that for when the system is at the new quantum critical point, the mass of the nematic field will not disappear. It will disappear only at the diagonals of the Brillouin zone, right? At, it means that the nematic mass will disappear only at the cold spots. At the rot spots, which is this, uh, these four places uh, shown here, we will have a finite uh, nematic mass. Uh, I'm sorry, just uh, I need to to drink some water. Uh. Okay. Let's go back. So the next the next question is well, as I said, I want to address the superconducting properties of this system. So I'm going to use this strong coupling uh, version of the, of the theory for a superconducting state, which means that I want to use, uh, I want to use Yashberg theory to describe the system. So the first part of to set up the, this kind of approach is just to evaluate this, uh, the effective propagator for the nematic field. So I have to include the contribution from electrons and for the lattice. The contribution from the electrons is just the particle hole contribution, and I'm, I'm considering just one loop contribution, which is a bosonic, uh, bosonic self energy. And after integrating out the, uh, the, in that case, the acoustic form, we get this contribution from the, that kind of uh, effective nematolytic interaction. And lastly, you have to compute this uh, fermionic self-energy in terms of this effective uh, propagator for the, as I said, for the nematic field. And after that, I have, uh, it's a little bit technical, but I have to define this, the, 
the effective self energy for the electron to quasi particle for the conduction electrons in terms of new quantities. And these new quantities uh, obey, obey this kind of uh, equation. We have two equations. Oh, I'm sorry, let's go back. We have an equation for this Z, the renormalization mass function. And we have another equation for the superconducting order parameter defined in terms of phi that was set, was set here as a, in terms of the normalization mass function. In that case, if she, I solve this equation at the pneumatic quantum critical point, right? And uh, there is another, uh, I have to, to say that I am linearize the, the equation at the fan surface. In that case, you have just this theta angle. So this is the solution for the superconducting order parameter at the, for S-wave symmetry. And you have right here the dependency of the superconducting order parameter in terms of the theta angle around the fan surface. And also there is the de dependency in terms of the, of the frequency, which is, uh, is the Matsubara frequency. And as you can see, there is no coupling to the left, only the, the effective coupling of the electrons to the pneumatic field is set to a finite value. And this coupling, this is effective coupling, is defined in terms of the microscopic coupling. And we have this effective lattice coupling defined in terms of the uh, microscopic lattice coupling and the elastic constant. So the mean, in fact, if I increase the lattice coupling, I obtain this new result. So what happens? What happens is because uh, the, the curves uh, define this, uh, the superheating of the parameter get closer. Uh, in the case, uh, in the, I set the elastic constant to a finite value. But what happens if I increase a little bit more? If I take the position of the hot spot Hot spot is, uh, is for theta equals zero. And they increase the lattice coupling, uh, between this result, and uh, all these curves become degenerate at some point. This point is the critical value of the lattice coupling where the superconducting state fields appear. So uh, this is the main result. But what happened in the D wave case? Here we have the solution for the D wave, right? We have no lattice coupling. And this is the D wave because at the cold spot, the, the superconducting order parameter is zero, right? And again, we have uh, this dependency of the superconducting order parameter as a function of theta, the angle around the fan surface. If the lattice coupling uh, is set to a finite value, the, the curve get closer as in the case of the S-wave solution. And as in the case of the S-wave solution, uh, at, at a critical value of the lattice, the lattice coupling, the, the gaps, the gaps uh, will become degenerate as a function of frequency, and the superconducting state will disappear right here. Uh, but to, to see or to understand a little bit more, it is the better option is just to plot superconducting Tc as a function of the, of the lattice coupling and the effective electronic coupling. In the absence of the lattice coupling, have this kind of behavior, which means that uh, at low and the weak coupling regime, the Tc for S wave and D wave symmetry will become almost generate. Uh, in fact, Tc for S wave uh, always larger than, than Tc for the wave symmetry, but at, in the weak coupling regime, they almost degenerate. If you increase the lattice coupling, there will be uh, a quantum phase transition, which means that Tc will become finite just for uh, this interaction, when this interaction is, uh, is larger than a critical value. And uh, if you plot the difference between Tc for S-wave symmetry and D-wave symmetry, we see that in the strong coupling regime for the effective electron interaction, 
there will be almost no difference between all these curves, which means that in the strong coupling regime for the effective electron interaction, this coupling, the coupling to the lens, will be relevant, which is reasonable because at high uh, temperature, for example, the resistivity for this kind of system, for the iron selenide, for example, is, is almost uh, non ferro liquid. And uh, we can get uh, some other results. You see, if I plot now Tc for SLA symmetry as a function of the electric coupling, and then varying this uh, effective electronic coupling, you get this kind of result. So the blue region describes a uh, non ferro liquid behavior, uh, why, or whereas the yellow region describes a ferro liquid regime. And we have this transition between these two states uh, for this kind of, uh, it's described like that, lambda left to the power three uh, halves, right? But uh, you can obtain a nicer result if I plot, for example, this difference. Tc naught is the temperature for the superconducting state in the absence of the lattice coupling, minus Tc, uh, the superconducting temperature, to the S-wave state uh, when the nematoelastic coupling is finite. And uh, here in this, we have the lambda, lambda uh, the critical value of the, the, the coupling to the lattice minus, uh, minus uh, the coupling to the lattice uh, to a uh, smaller than this critical coupling, of course. And as you can see, all the curve, all the point, uh, goes to the same position. They fall on the same curve in that case. And close enough to the critical value of the lattice coupling, we have this power law dependence for the transition temperature, right? And for the, okay, I, I, get, I think I, uh, just to show that in the D-wave uh, case, you have the same, basically the same result, right? The only difference for the, the S-wave uh, case is the value of the critical temperature, which is, of course, is smaller, but you have a, the, the same kind of result. And here you have a comparison between the S wave and the D wave case. As I said, the temperature, the critical temperature is smaller, right? But uh, there, is a, there is a minor difference because, uh, first of all, the critical temperature uh, in both cases has the same kind of behavior describe uh, this, uh, this function. As I said, Tc0 is the critical temperature to the superconducting state in the absence of uh, lattice coupling. We have, and also we have this kind of function, is a universal function, which describes all these points uh, here in both curves. And this function has this kind of dependence. If x, for example, uh, you can uh, obtain the, the exact form of this function just when, for example, x goes to zero and, and as x goes to one. And we have uh, these exponents, critical exponents, which appears. And by comparing for S wave and D wave case, we can see that this exponent is, uh, is different, right? They are close, for example, but they are, they are different. And as a result, we can obtain this phase diagram. And as I said, we have the, super, uh, the superconducting state, we have non ferro liquid state, and we have ferro liquid state. And there is also a quantum critical point induced by the lattice coupling. And the critical value of this lattice coupling uh, behaves as a power law of the electron uh, coupling, which always exists. And this uh, exponent eta is also dependent on the type of symmetry of the superconducting state. And the critical temperature uh, for the superconducting state is described by this function, as I said. And we also have this behavior for the 
uh, electrical resistivity, which is uh, is given in terms of a non permeable behavior at high temperature, but at low temperature there is this permeable behavior, right? So now, now I move on to discuss the second one. I think I have uh, five minutes. Okay. Uh, so since I don't have uh, so much time, I uh, I'm gonna skip this. Uh, this part of the presentation, I think I, I would have uh, a little bit more, more time. So I'm going to skip to my conclusions. Just uh, uh, after the presentation, if you want, want, want to discuss, I think I... So to conclude, uh, just to the case of the, uh, of the, the first work, uh, as I, sh uh, I said, the nematic nematoelastic interaction uh, could be uh, relevant to describe the transition to the supercomputing state because, as in the experimental uh, observation, we have this depletion, the depression of, this, of TC close enough to the nematic quantum critical point. So this may be caused by this kind of interaction. And of course, this nematoelastic interaction behaves as a norm. It can induce uh, superconductivity from a non fermi liquid to a, a fermi liquid state. And this, uh, this transition, the superconducting super transition to the fermi liquid or non fermi liquid state, is characterized by, uh, by different exponents. And these exponents depend on the kind of symmetry of the superconducting state. Right? And so, I. I conclude here and acknowledge it to, to everyone. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Are there questions for Samuel Dole? Yes. Thanks. Uh, why don't you have a self-energy which depends on the orbitals of the ion? Uh, as I said, it's an effective, effective model. So it's the simplest model, and uh, of course, I can include. Yeah, but you still have five orbits, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, an effective, uh, just w one one model. It's a, it's a kind of effective model. But uh, why? why? Because I, I want to keep the calculation as simple as possible. And, uh, Is there any yeah, there is a, there is this model. For example, the 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 simplest model. Of course, it's not the the most general model. If you you want to include more orbitals to describe these kind of states, but uh, at some regime, this uh, two-band model, the one-band model, it's uh, it's enough at least to get a taste of the physics. Yeah. Uh, I agree that the. For the cool phrase, this is where I'm going to go. I don't understand very well. But that's fine, thanks. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, the main reason is that is that I want to keep the, the calculations as simple as possible and, uh, uh, and agree that in, in the. Thanks. All right. Uh, I think my question is on the same line, but from a different perspective. I mean, in most of the systems, you can treat them as a two-band problem with two different superconducting gaps. Mm -hmm. And here you just have one. Uh, the, how, and the two gaps interact with each other, with scattering. Mm -hmm. the, how would you expect the, the, the second gap to influence the coupling to, 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 to the acoustic modes or to the pneumatic state? Yeah. Well, uh, once you have three, three people playing around instead of two. Yeah, it's a... As a, the most honest question is, uh, right now I don't know. It may be uh, important to describe at least uh, uh, some of the regimes because it, it's, not the, it's not the final calculation. It's just the calculation to see what happens in the low energy limit. At, low, at least in the low energy limit, uh, as I said, for example, if I come back and show the behavior of the resistivity, it agrees in, in, in the low temperature limit. But uh, if I go, if I want to study, for example, another regime of temperature, maybe it's important to include these other 
orbitals and or to, or to get a more realistic model. Oh, hi, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I, I have a doubt, in, in fact. Uh, mm -hmm. When you define the, the matter-elastic interaction, like mm -hmm. before in the Hamiltonian, you said that including this term, you have an anisotropic mass, right? Mm -hmm. if, if I'm I think right yeah. here. So now you have an anisotropic mass because you have criticality depending on mm -hmm. the angle. But, and the anisotropy is introduced in the F, in the F function because of the D wave, right? E, not the mass, because uh, this mass is related to the pneumatic mass after integrating out in the phonons. So this is the effective mass for the pneumatic field. OK, but it, it just appears when you have this anisotropic term on your Hamiltonian, or not? That, that's my doubt. No, no, that, that's, I have to, uh, yeah, if I, if I set this R0 to the in a much quantum critical point, we get a, we get a finite pair, right? If okay. I, outside the uh, diagonal of the grid one zone. Okay. But uh, it's an isotropic mass because it depends on the, on the angle. That's, uh, oh, that's I, uh, if uh, I, my question is, if, it, if I haven't this anisotropy in the electronic part, mm -hmm. it would still be anisotropic, the mass, if I didn't have this F, F was equal to no, one. no, no. The the F does it does it uh, interfere Affects. on the on the mass on this kind oh, of okay. mass. Okay. The F is just for the is the Yukawa interaction. It's just this. Uh, it depends on the uh, just to, to define the Yukawa interaction in terms of okay. the magnetic field. I thought they were correlated. Okay. No, no, no. They are okay. not related. Okay. More questions. Plenty of time. Okay, thank you. Just oh. a, a silly oh. question. Is there a way to tune in a material this uh, coupling and see this uh, superconducting Fermi liquid, superconducting non Fermi liquid transition? Yeah, or, uh, the, 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 I think the only way that I know is just by applying pressure. It is the, the only way. And what I should measure to see these, uh, what observable? I don't know, you're talking about shear modules there, perhaps, I don't know, acoustic waves or stuff like this? Y you mean the best way to see the effect yeah, of the, the, the transition took place? Yeah, in that case, uh, the superconductive transition just uh, investigates. It's, it's a tricky because it's, uh, we have to make sure that this interaction exists, but the interaction between the pneumatic field and, for example, the left always exists. Uh, it's just uh, to, uh, right now I don't, uh, don't know uh, a way, because the best way is just to, if I turn off this interaction, you would see this, this kind of behavior. The superconducting transition we would peak at the, at the pneumatic point critical point, but uh, I think the, the only way is just to apply impression is see what happens close enough to the pneumatic quantum critical point. I have a question about whether your results are sensitive to exactly where you choose the pneumatic quantum critical point to be, because it's extrapolated yeah. from higher temperatures. Yeah. So does TC change, or does it just shift a little bit, or does it? Yeah, change? for example, the, the only, there is another way to change or to see the effect on the, of, on the superconductive transition. For example, if you change the elastic constant, we can see, we can play with this kind of coupling and see what happens to the, to the transition temperature. Yeah, but that's if you tune the material to change the, the location of the critical point. But in your material, so you're kind of guessing exactly where the quantum critical point is. So if you guess it a bit wrong, or you, you just shift the number, does it make a difference at all? Yeah, it, it may, it may so what does it make do? some difference. Because it, it, as I said, it's a, a little bit tricky. Because it's not, for example, to control the quantum critical point, we have to make sure that this interaction, this last constant, C66, is, right, is constant. And okay. then I can play with the other constants and 
and then, and then we can change just the, let, the effective interaction. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? No? Okay, then if not, I guess we can thank Panoldo again for a very nice talk. Okay, thank you. And it's lunchtime, so I guess we come.